What is up guys? Welcome to Jace Racing. My name is Jason and today uh, all of the tools and parts that I need for my next engine upgrade has finally arrived. So it's time to get upgrading. Now the two upgrades that I'm talking about is the first one being the three angle valve job and the other upgrade is adding some sort of uh, exhaust tube coming from the crankcase all the way to the uh, cylinder head. Now these two upgrades are going to be able to improve the efficiency of the engine and also add a bit more horsepower. So hopefully this engine will reach beyond 16 horsepower. I mean, I've added quite a bit of upgrade to it, but until I build my own dyno, I won't be able to test it out. But regardless, we are going to do the upgrades first. Now to explain a bit about these two upgrades, let's talk about the, the one with the crankcase, the connecting to the cylinder head first. The effect of that upgrade, you can imagine you are pumping air into a flat tire on your bike with a hand pump. The more you pump, the more resistance you feel from your hand pump. Now that's essentially the same thing as what's happening inside the crankcase, but with one exception, because the crankcase gets very, very hot. So the air pressure in there gets very, very large. So imagine the piston going up and down the motion, air is getting really, really hot. It's expanding, the air pressure is going really high. So as the piston moves down, there's a bunch of high pressure air trying to push it back up. Okay, there's an opposing force constantly working against the movement of the piston. So that's actually making the engine's life a lot harder by you know, having that happen to it. Now these engines are designed you know, originally for operating at 2,000, 3,000 RPM. So that's not too much of a problem, but when we're pushing it up to like 6,000, 7,000 RPM, that becomes more of an accentuated problem. So by connecting a tube, to the cylinder head where essentially allowing the air pressure to escape and then you know obviously the uh, cylinder head has a bunch of canals and whatnot that allows the air to go out so um, it's going to uh, improve the engine response somewhat now with the three angle valve job it's a bit like porting for the uh, valve seats now uh, porting is essentially just uh, cleaning out all the uh, imperfections and all the jagged edges and stuff. So if you imagine one of those uh, aerodynamic uh, visualizations with the smoke going through like an aerofoil, imagine having a bit of like a kink on the aerofoil. You would see that when the smoke goes through it, vortices would build up, you know, uh, around these uh, imperfections. So by removing that, you're allowing the air to travel smoother. And that's basically the same thing, but we're doing it to the valve seat. Now the valve seat right now is a bit more of a uh, 90 degrees angle. It's not that sharp. It's still rounded, but it's not as uh, efficient if we uh, make it into like a more of a trumpet shape. So that's basically what our three angle valve job is doing. We're going to sort of enlarge a little bit and make the angle a lot smoother so that the air can travel a lot easier through these uh, intake and exhaust ports. So that's essentially what we're trying to do today. Anyway, so uh, that's enough talking. Let's start taking down the engine and start upgrading. All right guys, now that we've taken the engine down, the first thing we need to do is actually check on the engine oil because uh, I'm very curious as to how effective this uh, oil filter actually is. Uh, I did take out the oil filter once and the oil that came out was very, very clear. So I'm quite happy with that, but uh, I don't know uh, what is happening inside. There could be some residue, uh, sort of debris and stuff like that inside, but uh, we'll have to see. So we're going to let the oil out and then see uh, what happens. So uh, let's do that first and then we'll uh, start doing the three angle valve job. After that, we'll do the uh, tube that connects to the uh, cylinder head. So let's go. All right, so let's check out the engine oil. Now, just by looking at the stuff coming out, it really does look like it's very clear. Let me zoom in a bit. So this engine has been uh, running at idle for about two hours in total, like off and on. I didn't do it like for like a very long period of time, maybe 15 minutes for a day, 10 minutes, something like that. But you know, just a pretty good amount of running. Uh, what you're seeing here is, is moving. <laughs> so 
you can tell that oil is really clear uh, for, for an engine that has been running for about two hours. I mean, I did rev up a couple of times just to see how much it can go up to, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. This, this filter thing, very good idea. So <laughs> I'm pretty impressed by this. So anyway, I'm going to let it drain out completely and then we're going to start working on the cylinder head. All right, now that the oil has completely drained out, it's time to take out the cylinder head to work on the three angle valve job. All right, so one of the tools that I've been waiting for is this. Uh, this is going to help me uh, get rid of the uh, valve a lot easier, but because using the other tool was just way too painful. So I'm going to use this tool to make my life a lot easier. All right, guys, so this is the cylinder head properly stripped down and I've cleaned up all the uh, carbon buildup. It's nice and ready for the free angle valve job. Now the free angle valve job, uh, as the name suggests, uh, requires blades of three different angles. One is a uh, 45 degrees. Okay, this is a 45 degrees. Okay, and then a 60 degree. This is a 60 and also a 30 degree. Okay, so when you use these three different blades, it will cut the uh, seat into a sort of trumpet-like shape and allowing the air to flow through a lot easier. Now, once we are done with all the uh, cutting with the triangle blades, we still need to mate the valve to the seat again with some uh, valve grinding compound. So yeah, that's basically uh, how we're gonna do it. But there's one thing that I need to talk about and that is when I was researching on how to do this three-angle valve job, I always come across people saying, okay, you guys need to make sure that you don't put too much pressure onto the blade when you're doing it. But honestly, you can't really gauge how much pressure you're putting onto the blade. So the one proper way that I found would be a very good indicator is actually using some coloring. Mark the valve seat so that uh, you, can, you can know how much you're cutting through. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna prep these two valves with a bit of a uh, coloring, okay? And this this is especially for coloring engines and stuff, so you need to buy a uh, special paint for that. But uh, anyway, so, so let's just try that, color it up. Just color it up as much as you can around the area that you're gonna cut. And then you can start doing the cutting. So we're gonna start with a 45 first. The 45 is safest angle because that's the angle which you know a lot of uh, people can do as their first upgrade okay so this is the 45 degrees and once you have the blade in okay the blade should have a bit sticking out of the valve seat it shouldn't be all like inside so it should be like right in the middle of the blade if, if you look at this blade the seat should be right in the middle of the blade like that anyway so let's start doing that All right, guys, so this is a very good example of why this paint is very useful. So you can see after I did one pass, like there's this really shiny silver ring. But as I go around to this side, there's still some paint residue around this silver ring. So that means it's not an even cut all the way through. So I need to go one more time just to give it a one pass through and that should do it. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this time after the second pass, it looks a lot cleaner, the silver ring. And that is a great indicator of a pretty good cut. So we're now ready for the second angle. We can do the 30 degrees first. Now it's a good idea to recolor it just to make sure that we're not um, you know, missing anything. So just color it again when we do the 30 degree. 
Now, when you do this triangle valve job, definitely make sure that you get, you know exactly what the uh, size of the port is and you get the right sized blade. So uh, usually you can just tell the manufacturer what sort of cylinder head you have and they'll be able to give you the perfect fit. Anyway, so let's get started. Alright, so swipe it down. Again, it's a very clean, very clean silver ring. And that's basically cutting the inside of the trumpet. That looks pretty nice. Now it's time to cut the third angle, which is the 60 degree. 60 degree is the widest one, basically, it's the mouth of the port. Again, we need to color it. feels weird it's, when you guys buy these blades just make sure that you get the ones that you can lock this in place because this one is like it just uses friction to lock in place so I'm not really I'm not really happy with this version but anyway it does a job it gets the job done and it's quite nice so let's do the exhaust part Done. So that's basically the three angle valve job done. It's a very simple job really. But apparently the benefit of the three angle valve job is the higher the horsepower of your engine, the more of a, a boost there is for your horsepower by doing this. So that's great. So porting and this, you do it together, you'll be able to improve your horsepower by quite a bit apparently. So anyway, let's clean up the paint and then uh, we'll move on to the uh... like sometimes you think you know these really minor upgrades don't do much but apparently it's actually quite effective at uh, giving you some free horsepower without having to invest into a lot of expensive hardware anyway so let's start doing the valve mating part in the mess but uh, that's basically both ports both valves done and we're now ready to reinstall the uh, cylinder head but uh, when I put the valve in you can I don't know if you can tell but it sits in a lot more than before which is great because it's an indication that the three angle valve job has sort of widened the opening a little bit more and allows the uh, valve to sort of sit in a bit more and obviously that's going to allow more air to get in much better as well so yeah that's uh that's fantastic so anyway let's get started reinstalling the cylinder head So that's the uh, free angle valve job done. The next one is going to be a tubing that runs from the crankshaft to the cylinder head, which I've already created a uh, cover that actually allows me to do it. Let me find a cover. So what I'm going to do with this uh, valve is I'm gonna put a lot of uh, sealant compound here and a bit of uh, those uh, red thread lock. To make sure that it doesn't fall through. It'd be stupid if it does, so yeah. We're doing that basically. Installing it like that. Hopefully it sticks. Yep. Yeah. 
five minutes later. All right, so with a bit of tinkering and stuff, I finally got this done. But in the process, I sort of broke the uh, thread to the other thing. But hopefully I'll be able to just screw it in enough to be able to secure it. Anyway, so do that. So what I'm going to do is just basically using the governor hole to attach this valve here. And uh, that should do it. Hopefully. Six and a half hours later. All right, guys. So after a bunch of messing around, uh, I've basically managed to got, get the uh, tubing installed. It goes from the governor hole all the way to the uh, cylinder head cover. Okay, now to install the valve onto the cylinder head cover, I had to take out the uh, inside layer, okay, of the cylinder head cover. So this layer, it actually can be taken out. And after you take it out, because there's a one way valve in there, uh, I basically have nothing protecting uh, the uh, cylinder head. Uh, from anything going in through this pipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have sort of like a oil catch can sort of thing installed and has like a filter, air filter and stuff that uh, sort of filters out anything that goes into this tube. But this thing is way too big. Uh, this is, I think this is supposed to be for cars or bikes or something. So I'm gonna have to get a smaller one because this is adding a lot of weight to the engine unnecessarily. So I'm gonna have to get a different one. But basically the idea is to have uh, this as a filtration system to prevent any debris from, from entering the cylinder head. And uh, I have another tube to connect to the outside world basically. So that's basically what it's uh, supposed to do. Now. Uh, I'm gonna have to let the uh, sealant dry, so unfortunately I won't be able to run the engine today. But that's basically the upgrade I needed to do for this engine. So now it's just a matter of putting the engine oil back in. The engine oil was very clean, very happy about that. So this uh, filtration cover is fantastic. Gonna be very good for when we need to do like endurance races and stuff. So this is a, a great addition to this engine build. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. That's pretty much the engine done. Now because I have a lot of sealant on either side of the tubing, I'm gonna have to wait for about 24 hours for it to dry before I actually can test out the engine. So instead of uh, testing the engine, I'm just gonna have to start packing up everything because we uh, reclaimed a track that we used to operate and now because it's a, in a very big mess, we have to go fix it up and stuff. So I'm gonna have to pack everything up and tomorrow I'm gonna be heading out. I'm gonna be at the track for two, three days. So I need a lot of tools and stuff like that. So I'm gonna start doing that. Anyway, so that's it for this video. Um, stay tuned if you're interested and the next step for this engine and i think uh once the engine runs and without any problem we'll be able to take it to the track uh, for a good shakedown and we'll be able to see how much better it is from the previous prototype anyway that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one peace